today we are going to talk about the shock caused by hypovolemia and especially the hypovolemic shock caused by hemorrhagic shock in which the blood loss occur now the hypovolemia shock or the hypovolemic shock can occur due to uh, fluid loss either due to loss of blood or due to loss of uh, water or loss of plasma but any condition which leads to decreased amount of fluid in the circulatory system in the body can lead to hypovolemic shock but today we are specifically considering the hypovolemic shock that is caused by the hemorrhagic shock or due to bleeding now Hypovolemic shock uh, due to hemorrhage or hemorrhagic shock is a common shock now that we see normally in the accident and emergency department and in other departments as well. Now, basically, we defined a shock is a, a condition in which there is a decreased, decreased or inadequate supply of oxygen and other nutrients to the body. This is, for example, the heart and it is normally pumping the blood to the different organs and uh, the organs basically consume the oxygen, the nutrients, and then the deoxygenated blood returns to the heart. The, the, the deoxygenated blood is pumped to the lungs. It gets oxygenated and it uh, is cup. Then it comes back to the heart and it is repumped. Now. We discussed that with when this pumping or uh, when there is decreased supply of blood or there is decreased uh, supply of oxygen or other nutrient to the body tissues and it decreases to the extent that the demand of the organs, the demands of the tissues cannot be fulfilled, then that condition is called shock. And we discussed that the shock, then we discussed that the shock uh, can either be with normal cardiac output or with low cardiac output, low cardiac output or with normal cardiac output. So we discussed different types of shock. Then we also discussed different stages of shock. Now, basically, uh, we discussed that there are three uh, different stages of shock, the non-progressive, the progressive and irreversible stages. Before uh, discussing each and every uh, stage of the shock in detail, uh, we are going to consider the hemorrhagic shock as an example to see how the how the human body responds, how the compensatory mechanisms in the human body, they react to decrease in, in uh, to decrease in blood flow or due to inadequate supply of nutrients to the body. Now, let's see, for example, this is a human body and in which the blood loss is occurring. Suppose, for example, blood loss has started to occur. 10% of blood is being removed. Here, the blood, the amount of blood, then the quantity of blood in the body is normal. The cardiac output in the arterial pressure, which is being shown as a percentage of the normal, is also normal because it is 100% of the normal at this level. At this level, this is the arterial pressure. This is the cardiac output. So at this point, at this point, the cardiac output is 100%, the arterial pressure is 100%. The cardiac output and the arterial pressure are being expressed expressed on the y-axis. Now, the, the bleeding or the amount of blood that is removed uh, from the body, for example, here hemorrhage is occurring and blood is being removed or bleeding is occurring, blood loss is occurring. Now, as the amount uh, of blood that is removed from the body increases, there is a decrease in the arterial pressure and the cardiac output, but it occurs in a particular way. Now, up till 10% of the blood loss, up till this point, up till this point, up to 10% of the blood can be removed from the body and there will be almost no change in the arterial pressure and cardiac output. Almost no change and especially the arterial pressure will never change up till this 10% of the blood loss. So, when hemorrhage occurs, when initial 10% of the blood loss occurs, in the initial 10% of blood loss, there is almost a no change occurring. But as soon as the, 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 the bleeding or the amount of blood that is removed from the body increases to 20%, then to 30%, then to 40 and 45%. So around 40 to 45% when the amount of blood removed or the, the amount of hemorrhage which takes out the blood from the body, when it approaches at this point at around 45%, both the cardiac output and the arterial pressure has fallen to around zero. And it, and at this point, the, the, body, the human body or the person with hemorrhage or any animal from uh, the body of which the, this blood is being removed will die at this point. So what we see is that at initial uh, around 10% of the uh, blood loss, almost no change has occurred. But slowly and gradually, is, is the amount of blood being removed or is the amount uh, of blood in the hemorrhage is increasing, the arterial pressure, the arterial pressure and the cardiac output are steadily falling down and at around 40 to 45% of blood loss, they have touched the zero point. This is the zero level. They have touched the zero point and the arterial pressure and cardiac output uh, becomes a zero and the patient will die at this point. Now, initially, as the amount of, as the blood is being removed or blood loss is occurring, there is a decrease in the volume of blood. There is a decrease in the, because blood is coming out of the body. So the amount of blood, the volume of blood in the system, it decreases. The volume of blood basically decreasing. As the volume of blood decreases, it basically decreases the filling pressure. Now, filling pressure basically pushes the blood towards the heart. Filling pressure, it pushes the blood towards the heart. So normal amount of blood with normal filling pressure, it helps in pushing the blood towards the heart and it basically helps in the venous return. In re it helps in the blood in returning toward the heart so that it can be pumped again and it can become, it can be oxygenated again. So decrease in volume due to hemorrhage or due to blood loss leads, uh, leads to decreased filling pressure, which leads to decrease or venous return. Now, up to 10% of loss has no effect. 
up to now around 10% of loss will occur and there will be no significant change in the filling pressure there will be no significant change in the venous return and you will see the arterial pressure and the cardiac output will be maintained at around 30 to 45% of blood loss there the arterial pressure in the venous uh, the cardiac output will become zero now initial 10% as we discussed will have no effect initial 10% of the loss will have no effect but at around 30 to 40% of loss will bring the arterial pressure and the cardiac output to zero now there will uh, there won't be sufficient blood to pump and the heart the heart won't be having any preload to pump so the arterial pressure the, the pressure in the heart the pressure in the the pumping of the heart the cardiac output and the pressure in the uh, arteries the arterial pressure it will fall to zero at around 30 to 40 percent of blood loss now during the blood loss the sympathetic system gets activated when there is blood loss when blood loss is occurring so the sympathetic system is activated now we discussed it up to this point up to 10 percent of the blood loss there is no change occurring and the arterial pressure is almost normal the cardiac output is may fall initially and rapidly but the arterial pressure is maintained the arterial pressure is maintained up to maximum uh, point or uh, to the maximum capacity as long as the body can now when the blood loss starts occurring what happens is that the sympathetic systems get activated now this decrease in uh, volume of blood this decrease in volume of blood leads to decrease filling pressure and it leads to decrease venous pressure now this venous pressure will be detected by the uh, great arteries and great veins in the thorax and in the neck and they will send send signal to the brain they will send signal to the brain and in the and from the brain centers this sympathetic system will get activated now the human brain will send signal to the heart and it will also send signal to the arteries and veins what will happen is that the arterioles will constrict these arterioles here they will constrict constriction of the arterioles will occur the veins will also constrict these veins will also constrict what happens is that due to constrictions of the arteriole they due to constrictions of the arteriole the resistance to the blood flow increases so the arterial pressure increases so that a decrease in the a decrease in the blood volume will be compensated by a an increase in the arterial arteriolar pressure increasing the systemic resistance and at the same time constriction of the vein will basically push the remaining blood towards the heart by increasing the venous return so a blood loss blood loss will activate sympathetic system and sympathetic system activation from the brain will basically helps in constriction of the arterioles it will help in the constriction of the veins and it will also increase the heart rate so these three changes occur due to activation of the sympathetic system and these three changes by increasing the heart rate by constriction of the arterioles by constriction of the veins basically help to maintain the arterial pressure it helps in maintain in maintaining the arterial pressure and the cardiac output initially but as more blood loss is occurring as more blood loss is occurring it it becomes difficult it becomes difficult even for this sympathetic system to maintain the arterial pressure and the arterial pressure starts decreasing the arterial pressure starts decreasing similarly the cardiac output starts decreasing because up to some extent the arterial pressure up to some extent the arterial pressure in the cardiac output can be maintained with the help of sympathetic system activation which basically gets activated in the brain which sends signals to the arterioles which sends signals to the heart which sends signals to the veins but when a lot of blood bleeding has occurred for example the bleeding has increased or the blood loss has increased now the advantage of this sympathetic system activation is the advantage of this sympathetic system activation is that 30 to 40 percent of blood loss can be survived 30 to 40 up to this point like up to 30 percent of blood can be removed up to 30 to 40 percent even up to 40 percent of the blood can be removed and still the person can survive the patient can survive so this is the advantage of the sympathetic system that due to decrease venous return due to decrease uh, filling pressure due to decrease volume this system in the brain it gets activated it, and it starts a different changes in the uh, uh, circulatory system by constricting the arterioles by, by pushing the veins to increasing the venous uh, return and by increasing the heart rate all these changes help in surviving a blood loss is high as 30 to 40 percent a blood loss is high as 30 to 40 percent it is a big amount like uh, even up to half of the blood can uh, be lost a bleeding uh, as much high as 30 to 40 percent of the blood may be lost and still the patient can survive so this is basically the advantage of this uh, sympathetic system along with some other system which we uh, have uh, some of them we have discussed previously and some of them we will be discussing in the coming uh, chapters now the effect of all these sympathetic activation is basically more on the arterial pressure now if you see the arterial pressure this is the arterial pressure now the arterial pressure is maintained for a longer time now the, the cardiac output has fallen to this point now for example at 10% of blood loss the, this is the level of cardiac output but the arterial pressure is still higher so the they are basically more beneficial for the arterial pressure as compared to the cardiac output although although the, the constriction of the veins will help in the venous return and due to uh, increase in the heart rate the cardiac output can also be maintained but the arterial pr uh, pressure is maintained more as compared to the cardiac output now the advantage of maintaining the arterial pressure is basically supplying the, the blood to different organs and tissues so that they, they can be perfused and the arterial pressure has a greater role in perfusing the uh, different tissues now cardiac output is also important now once around 50 percent of blood loss has occurred at around 50 percent of uh, fall uh, in the 
at around 50% of fall in the arterial pressure or the cardiac output once has occurred, there is a second plateau. If you see, there is a steady fall, there is a steady fall in the arterial pressure and cardiac output, but at this point, the blood supply, the, the perfusion of the brain organs, the important vital organs of the uh, parts of the brain, they receive so much less amount of oxygen that the sympathetic system in the brain, they get activated once again and it again helps in increasing. You see, there is again an increase in the arterial pressure. There is again a slight increase in the cardiac output. Now, this is basically known as the second plateau. This is the second plateau. Now, this is the last ditch or this is the last response or the last uh, attempt. It is like a last attempt. It is last attempt by the brain to basically maintain the arterial pressure and the cardiac output. So, initially, initially the, uh, the sympathetic system was maintaining the arterial pressure and the uh, cardiac output at almost the normal range. Then when the uh, blood loss started increasing, the blood loss started increasing, the arterial pressure and cardiac output started to decrease because uh, the sympathetic system, the increase in the heart rate, they could not like maintain it. But once a bigger decrease in the arterial pressure and cardiac output has occurred and there is a decrease in the oxygen supply and the nutrient supply to the brain, even the final stages of the uh, sympathetic system, it uh, they get activated by the brain and there is another attempt by the brain to increase the arterial pressure, the arteriolar pressure, increase the heart rate, increase the venous constriction so much that they try basically to again increase the arterial pressure and the cardiac output and all these changes, all these uh, compensatory mechanisms, they may basically help in surviving up to 40% of the blood loss, up to 40% of the blood loss can be survived and you see if these systems were not there, if these systems were not there then instead of 30 to 40% only 15 15 to 20% of the blood loss or around this much blood loss could be survived instead of this 40%. So had this had uh, this system not been there, only around 15 to 20 percent of the blood loss could be survived before dying, instead of the 30 to 40 percent of blood loss which is being uh, handled by the body through different mechanisms. Now, in all these uh, uh, compensatory uh, mechanisms, when all these compensatory mechanisms are active and there is a lot of venous uh, constriction of the arterioles and constriction of the veins, even in these times there is protection of the coronary and cerebral blood flow. The blood flow to the heart muscles and the blood flow to the uh, brain, the blood vessels to the brain in the blood vessels to the heart, the coronary supply. Now the heart muscles themselves need oxygen. The brain is basically helping to maintain the arterial pressure and to maintain the cardiac output. But the brain tissue itself need a lot of oxygen and nutrients. So while trying to constrict the arterioles and while trying to constrict the uh, veins, even in these situations, the coronary and cerebral blood flow vessels, the coronary vessels and the cerebral vessels, they are not constricted. constricted. Rather they are dilated. Rather they are dilated so that the amount of blood flowing to the cardiac uh, to the heart and the brain is basically increased rather than decreased so to summarize the uh, hypovolemic shock that is more and that is due to the hemorrhage or the hemorrhagic shock we see we see that the decrease in blood volume the decrease in blood volume basically uh, due to hemorrhage leads to decreased filling pressure the blood the filling pressure is the pressure which basically helps in returning the blood to the heart so blood loss decreases the blood volume which decreases the filling pressure which basically decreases the venous return to the heart and and up to 10% of this blood loss will have around no effect on the arterial pressure and the venous return. But when the blood loss has increased to around 30 to 40, 35 to 45%, the arterial and the arterial pressure and uh, cardiac output may return to zero. At 35 to 45% of the bleeding or 35 to 45% uh, blood loss, the arterial pressure may become zero. Now, when this blood loss is occurring, when this filling pressure is decreasing, when the venous return is decreasing, there is activation of the sympathetic system in the brain, which basically constricts the arteriole, which basically constricts uh, the veins and which basically increases the heart rate. With these mechanisms, around 30 to 40 percent of the blood loss can be survived. Now with these mechanisms, the arterial pressure, the arterial pressure and the cardiac output is maintained by the brain and a big uh, amount of blood loss can be survived. And if this, there was no uh, sympathetic system and if there were no compensatory systems, then only 15 to 20 percent of the around this much blood loss would be uh, survived. Now, Initially, there is a decrease in the cardiac output and arterial pressure. But once the arterial pressure has fallen below 70 and there is a decrease in the oxygen supply to the brain, then there is a final activation of the sympathetic system by the brain, which basically leads to a second plateau, which leads to a second plateau. And in all these systems, the arterial pressure, the arterial pressure is maintained more as compared to the cardiac output. And you see the arterial pressure is maintained at a higher level as compared to the cardiac output because the system is designed in such a way that it will basically prevent shock or it will basically prevent the decrease in oxygen and nutrients supply to the tissues. And it basically helps in maintaining perfusion for which arterial pressure is more important. So so, so all these uh, mechanisms uh, play an important uh, role and apart from these mechanisms there are some other mechanisms as well which we are going to discuss in detail further. Now this is basically the second plateau and while these actions, these mechanisms are playing their role, the, the coronary and the cerebral uh, blood flow is being maintained and the constriction of the uh, coronary and cerebral uh, uh, vessels will not occur, they will not constrict, rather auto-regulation will occur and there will be an increase in the blood flow to the cardiac muscles and the uh, brain tissues uh, instead of constriction of those uh, blood vessels. So these are basically the mechanisms, there is mechanism uh, which uh, basically try to maintain the arterial pressure and which basically try to maintain the cardiac output and due to which 
a big uh, a big blood loss around 40 30 to 40 percent of blood loss can occur and still the person can survive the shock and can uh, remain alive so that's about uh, the shock caused by hypovolemia and hemorrhage and in the next in the next lectures we are going to specifically discuss the progressive and non-progressive shock that how the increasing amount of blood loss basically converts a non-progressive shock to a progressive shock and it, what are the different mechanisms what are the different mechanisms used which basically activate the sympathetic system which basically uh, causes constriction of the arterioles which basically causes constriction of the uh, veins and which basically increases the heart rate and which all uh, basically help in maintaining a big blood loss as high as 30 to 40 percent thanks a lot for watching the video